good day to you, one and all. It is I, Justin Hawkins, and this is Justin Hawkins. Can you hear my chair squeaking, actually? Justin Hawkins rides again. Um, today, I'm talking about... Um, a little while ago, I did a Drumeo, or Drumeo uh, video, which was uh, Chad Smith... Um, Playing, playing along to something that you hadn't heard before, and it was really fun to react to. So today I'm going to look at another one, and this is uh, the Megadeth drummer hearing Mr. Brightside by The Killers for the very first time. Exciting. I'm sure you'll agree. Justin Hawkins rides again, again. All right, here we go. So, um, as I said before, I've covered uh, Drumio's series before. Um, and uh, so this one is Dirk Verburen uh, from Megadeth, and he's got a diverse musical background. And for those of you who are unaware, Megadeth is an American thrash metal band formed in Los Angeles in 1983. Um, Mr. Brightside is obviously known by basically everybody in the entire world. Um, it's a huge hit from The Killers. And in 2021, it was ranked number 378 in the same magazine's 500 greatest songs of all time and it is the second most streamed song on Spotify from the 2000s. And for some reason, this gentleman, Dirk, has never actually heard of it before. Um, anyway, quickly, I'm just going to tell you this. Um, also, tickets for my uh, live Justin Hawkins Rides Again for the first time UK tour are now on sale, um, along with the VIP meet and greet tickets too. And some of the shows are nearly sold out, so there's a link in the description to get tickets if they're still available. So let's have a look at a couple of comments from the video itself. Nits, Nitsuga Shu. Ah, I see what he's done. Oh, no, I don't. Josh. I don't know. Anyway, that weird name. Um, it says, I love how this version makes it sound like it's mellowed down a little bit, but seems to hit harder at the same time. And then um, Brandon Levsk. I don't know why I'm getting hung up on these people's names. But anyway, just, uh, just got done listening to Chad, and I love the difference between the two methods. One very intellectual, one very methodical, and there's no right way. They're both great. And then Rob Ty says his version feels like an old school rock track. It's awesome how changing one instrument can change the song so much. Brilliant observation. Okay, let's watch this. Okay. You would know about now, please. Oh, so this must be the bit when they're just playing the song to him, and then I suppose he's planning what he's going to do. Looks like he's charting it out on his snare drum. So what was he writing on there? Do you know that song? No, I don't. I just have to say, this is this is blowing my mind right now. I'm so glad you don't know this song. Let me put my gloves on for this. <laughs> That's a really tasty little filler. I'm Dirk Verbuen from Megadeth. Mostly throughout my life, I have been playing all sorts of... Oh, that little clip there. Um, I know we should probably get into the meat of this, really, but just watching the way his wrist is so loose on that hi-hat. You know, there's a sort of misconception about rock drummers being sort of mega stiff. Uh, I'm not talking about mega deaf, mega stiff. Um, and, you know, perhaps having less swing than a broken arm. Sometimes, sometimes that's true. Um, and you get some real shed builders. But this guy looks like he's got some finesse in his technique, at least, just from that one, one little clip we saw. Metal music. I listen to all kinds of different things. I grew up listening to a lot of pop. But not the killers. And rap slash hip-hop and electronic music. Uh, nowadays, I also listen to a lot of jazz. It's sort of, his faceology has a little bit of um, Taylor Hawkins about it, doesn't it? I wonder if that's like the, to do with like every every great drummer's genetic makeup is probably vaguely similar. Is, it, is that even a possible, why am I positing that as a theory? Ridiculous. Drumming wise, what I mostly do is at least somewhat rock related. So. As much as I have studied jazz and enjoyed, uh, I don't feel like I'm quite ready to be in a jazz trio. So if you if you guys are gonna play me a jazz song, I'm I'm gonna run away. <laughs> yeah. Uh. We'll load up the track, and yeah, you ready? Let's do it. Is he counting the bars here? Is that what's what's the prep? Yeah, I think he's charting this out. Oh, this is really cool. I didn't realise I did it, did it like that. So they're, they're not giving him any pointers, really. It's that he gets to interpret the, the backing track in whichever way he chooses, I suppose. 
I just have to ask, do you know that song? No, I don't. But I now have the song structure. <laughs> so I just have to say, this is this is blowing my mind right now. What was I'm that? I'm so glad you don't know this song. No, yeah, I don't. I, I yeah, it's it's. Uh, I wouldn't even know what band it is to be honest. So I have no idea. I, I might have heard it before. I don't know because it sounds like something I might have heard before. But I definitely don't listen to this band or know this band very well. So. Well, we won't yeah. tell you what it is until no, the end. So. Don't. You know, this might be fun for people to know. So I do this when I do session work in the studio, which I've done tons of. I've developed a method to just, you know, when you listen to a song the first time, just count, you know, name the parts, uh, count the bars, and then at least if anything you have. I'm going to go back to that a second. I want to see his chart. So let's have a look at what he's calling these sections then. So he's got intro, vox, I suppose that's when the singing starts, bass comes in, um, epic, now what's that bit then? It might be that. And then the chorus must be just the refrain, I'm Mr. Brightside. What's that bit after there? Something big. I'm not sure what he's marked that as. It's interesting that he's put, put epic, epic chorus. Fox, bass. Suffer. <laughs> it says suffer. Wow, he's not enjoying that song at all. You know, name the parts, uh, count the bars, and then at least if anything you have a structure. So in this case, that's all you need since there's no drums. I can make up my own, which thank you guys. Very generous of you. <laughs> <laughs> it's interesting they don't put a click track on it though. I mean, I, f I would always think that an, a, a truly metronomical kind of indication. There's a lot of drummers that need that really. But um, you, you can easily get lost in because everything's just so pastoral. There's not much in that arrangement that's sort of hard chugging apart from in the bass. I wonder if they give him a different mix to, to play along to or if they just use AI to take the drums away. Me having at least the structure, you know, I'm not saying I'm going to maybe read this perfectly, but at least I'll have some idea of where I am. <laughs> I like that, like just two little ghost notes before the first one's even audible. It's brilliant. Oh, he's gone half time. <laughs> the the thing that belies his sort of metal uh, chops is the kick drums. There's stuff where he's going. I think he must have two pedals hitting the one one kit, or maybe there's even two kick drums there actually. It's like, it's not just a it's like a it's three little kick drums in there and it's, it's that clicky kind of metal sound. Ah, now he's gone double time. Uh, not double time. For him, it's double time. Normal time is what we'd call it because it just sounds a bit more like what you'd expect to hear on that track. I like that saucy hi hat work. I like the way he pulled that back. That's the like it felt super lazy. Like it was a it was a, a, a retard. You know, it was kind of. But then somehow, probably probably came back in late on the next bar, but then completely rectified it so it had a human uh, ebb and flow to that that turn. Which you wouldn't be able to do actually if you did have that, you know, the aforementioned click track thing. That you'd lose all that kind of human nuances in his playing. It's actually a really saucy bit of drumming. This is that it's not as sort of when I did the Chad one. I think there was a lot of, sort of flashy, fancy stuff in there, and he was going for it, right? Really hitting hard and completely out of breath at the end of it. But this is actually like a really not. I don't want to say sedate, but you know, it's kind of I don't know. It's just something completely different in this guy's approach. Yeah, <laughs> nice triplets fill. The triplets fill is um, 
I think that's something that uh, John Bonham might have actually given the rock world. But what's really great about it is like it just looks like he's enjoying himself and he's super relaxed into it. I don't know what kind of beta blockers he's using, but I need to get myself some of those. <laughs> It's really cool when they've got that sort of picture in picture thing and you're seeing what his feet are up to, you see there's two kick drums, two kick drum pedals. And I always wonder about what you do with the hi hats in those situations. But I think the left I'm sure there's drummers among us that can educate me on this. Do you move your left foot off the kick drum and then move it onto the hi hat, or is there some other system, or do you just leave it sort of half closed or and then rely on the ride for the more open sort of you know, top endy work. I want to see if he goes to the hi-hat at any point, but I suppose he's, we're going to have to wait for another section if he's going to change the the width of the of the hats, you know. No, he goes to the right. It's really funny because it's all the, the right leg's doing all the work and then the left one is just poised. It's kind of... I don't know, it's rocking, just waiting for the moment to go. Brrr. There it is. <laughs> there it was. Uh, I feel like he could have retarded the end a bit. Missed the ending, damn it. <laughs> <laughs> cool. You're hired. Yeah, that's awesome. It's brilliant to hear a new interpretation of that. It's just so so interesting that he decided on halftime. What a musician. It's really, really cool. That, this Drumeo thing's amazing. I love it. Um, awesome. Use the comment section to tell me what you think. Um, obviously, I'm into it. I just think this is a great series and it's really fun to watch. Just in Hawkins Rides again, again. Don't forget to like, subscribe, hit the bell for notifications, watch one of these two videos, join the mailing list, and tickets for my live Justin Hawkins Rides again for the first time UK tour are on sale now, and there's a link to that in the description. Nice one, guys. Lots of love to you, and I'll see you upon the ice. Again.